Today I'm looking at the second of two extant bibliographies of the Whittington Press, both of which were published by the press itself and compiled by David Butcher. The first bibliography covered the period from the press's inception in 1971 up until 1981, and this second bibliography picks up the story in 1982 and runs through to 1993. It was issued in four states. Three of those were specials in various forms of leather binding, and those specials came with a collection of tipped in sample pages in the rear, making them quite substantial volumes. This alas lacks those sample pages, but as we'll see in a moment, I don't think that's quite as bad as it might sound. And the book was bound by the fine book bindery. We have a slipcase that is very much like um, the slipcases they produced for other Whittington Press editions. The previous owner unusually covered this in Mylar, but we have these laid green paper sides and then a cloth green uh, end as an embellishment to the slipcase. So pretty standard if you're familiar with Whittington's output. Onto the book itself. So it is quarter bound in green cloth, and that is over these paper sides, which have been printed with a green leaf poquoir pattern. I find the design of this particular edition quite pleasing with these green tones. I think they gel together quite nicely. If we flip the book over to the spine, we see here that we have blocked on the spine the title, the Whittington Press of Bibliography, 1982 to 93. Of course, the binding is sewn. We have green and white end bands, a trimmed top edge, and the bottom and four edges have been left untrimmed. Um, and as always, it feels like a nice, solidly well-made book. We open the book to come to the end leaves. They're printed on moss green laid paper. It's the same paper we saw, in fact, on the sides of the slipcase. And then the book proper is printed on zircon mold made paper. It's a fairly thick example of zircon paper with a nice off-white coloration and a little bit of a texture, but it's also a relatively smooth example of zircon paper. Altogether a nice paper and there's a good chunk of it in this edition which runs to approximately 180 pages. We come to the title spread. By way of frontispiece we have a photograph from the inside of the Whittington Press which is famously based in an old gardener's shed in the shadow of Whittington Hall in the Cotswolds and we see a collection of Whittington editions here on a window ledge. Uh, then the title page printed in two colours with a nice wood engraving altogether quite a tasteful presentation, I think. The book begins with an introduction that was written by the press's proprietor, John Randall. So it opens here with a nice two color printing. Um, so we have a drop cap printed in this large size of Caslon swash, which Whittington likes to bring out when it wants to show off. Um, and that's set aside the rest of the text. This whole book is set um, in various sizes of Caslon, which is the face with which Whittington got started and I think is therefore somewhat associated with the press. The main subject of the introduction is the developments at the press between the publication of this bibliography and that of the previous bibliography. That period was quite important for the press for a number of reasons, so the quantity and quality of its work, I think it's fair to say, um, really picked up during that period. Also, we can see here in Randall's introduction, one of the big developments was the acquisition of a wide range of monotype equipment, which allowed them then to start typesetting much um, longer form and much more ambitious printing work. Over on the right, we see the first of a fairly large number of tippins that are included in this book. So I said that unfortunately, this standard edition doesn't include the same sample pages that are in the specials, but there's an awful lot of material included in here and it makes it a real visual feast. So our first tip in is this nice um, example of Miriam McGregor's engraving work. Um, so she's produced an incredibly accurate floor plan of the press. And this has been reproduced by them in various formats. It's printed on quite nice paper and uh, is a really nice example of 
both McGregor's illustration work and the printing of the press. Continuing through the introduction, we have here some photographs. Here is John Randall at work inside the press. This low building we see here in the foreground is the gardener's cottage in which the press is based. And then in the background, we see Whittington Hall there flipping over. Here we also see Rose Randall at work in the press. And then next we have an essay which was written by David Butcher, and that provides an analysis of the press's output during the period. And this is organised around a number of important themes that emerged in the press's work. So we'll see those in just a moment. But before we press on, we see here that we have another tip in, and this is the sample title spread from Mountains in the Mind, which includes this nice colour wood engraving by Howard Phipps. So another nice inclusion there. And then pressing on through Butcher's essay, we have here a sample of some Chinese ceremonial paper. The first of the themes covered is Matrix, the serial published by the Whittington Press on all things typographic and bibliographic. We have a sample cover from the third issue of Matrix. Here we have a sample lino cut by Peter Allen that was included in an issue of Matrix. The essay covers um, the illustration of books, which of course is very important in most of Whittington's output. Here we have a very nice example of an illustration. This was by John Craig and it's from his first book for the Whittington Press and the Locks of the Oxford Canal. Here we have some examples of illustrations that are not tipped in but are printed directly onto the page. So this one is immediately recognisable as being the work of Gwenda Morgan. And then here we have the title um, that was engraved by Miriam McGregor for her book Allotments, which featured um, writing by R.P. Lister. Here we have another sample page. This time it's the title page from Ernest Dowson of Bouquet. Um, this is printed on a very nice antique paper. We can see it picked up a few scars of age, but as these older papers tended to have, it has a very nice uh, tactile quality, so that's fun to be able to handle. Uh, miniature books were published on a few occasions by the press, including um, a few books by Miriam McGregor, with more nice engravings by her. And there's more discussion of typography, which was really stepped up through the acquisition of that monotype equipment that I mentioned. And it got a real showcase in this book, A Miscellany of Type, which we saw pictured in that frontispiece photograph I've reviewed that elsewhere on this channel, and that was a really uh, nice showpiece, a real tour de force, demonstrating um, the range of type available at Whittington. Here we have, um, not tipped in, but a sample title from Song of the Scythe, again illustrated by Miriam McGregor. Here we have um, a sample of the paper that was used to bind that book allotments for which we saw the title a few pages ago. We have an example of some marbled paper. Here's an example of their broadside printing work. And then we come to the bibliography itself. And we have another nice line cut there. Again, two colour printing throughout the book. We have some notes here that tell one how to read the bibliography. And then the format of the bibliography is that the entries are numbered um, and we have all of the requisite bibliographic information here. Um, throughout the bibliography, we're going to see printed onto the page examples of more illustrations from Whittington's publishing history, whether they be wood engravings or lino cuts and so on. And another thing we'll see said in italics below many of the entries in the book are notes that were written by John Randall on the genesis of the project and what it is that makes that particular Whittington edition special. More nice engravings here. This one, for example, is again from Song of the Scythe. And there's little more to say. It's a bibliography, so it's mostly going to be a list of editions 
but of course with a very liberal scattering of sample illustrations that also make it a nice catalogue of the type of printing that Whittington itself does. This one is by John O'Connor. And then we reach the end of the bibliography and we have a list of minor publications and ephemera. Again, even here at the latter stages of the um, bibliography, we're getting tipped in material, catalogues and prospectuses. And then something that's quite handy is that we have a list of the books that were published prior to the issue of this bibliography. So we have a checklist of books published um, between the press's founding and 1981. So if you don't have that first bibliography, you can still get at least some basic details um, of which editions were published by the press prior to the beginning of this one. Uh, we end, of course, with a colophon that includes details here of those four states that I mentioned. So that is the Whittington Press a Bibliography 1982-93. to 93. It is a very useful reference source, of course, for anybody who is a Whittington Press collector and needs details of, um, basically needs a shopping list. Um, but I think it should be pretty evident from this quick look through that it's also a sublime example of Whittington's own publishing work. So altogether, a superb book. Um, in this ordinary edition, it can often be found relatively inexpensively. I think I paid about £95 for this particular copy. You might end up paying a little bit more, but certainly not into astronomical figures. Um, the only question remaining is what do we do to cover the press's period from 1993 until 2023, uh, where there's a conspicuous absence of a bibliography? Whittington have announced that Pages from Presses 2 is likely to be their last letterpress printed book. So I suspect we won't be getting another example just like this from Whittington, but I hold out hope that either another publisher, perhaps Nomad, will take up the baton and produce the bibliography to cover that last period of Whittington's lifetime, or failing that, maybe that Whittington itself will publish a bibliography, albeit not a letterpress printed one. But it would be really nice to finish the set and have a complete record of this press's wonderful output. For now, that's Whittington Press of Bibliography 1982 to 93. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more reviews of fine books.